Let's pray and look to the Lord and then we'll see what God has in store. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for ministering to us. Thank you for your presence in this place. Everything that you do in our midst is marvelous, beyond words. So truly blessed, truly blessed. Everything that you do leaves us speechless. You're lost for words to express our heart, express our love, express our devotion. Our gratitude to everything, Lord, for everything that you've done and everything that you continue to do, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this gathering of your people. Thank you for bringing each one of them, Father, from different homes we've gathered here to exalt the name of Jesus. We pray that you'll have your way in our midst. Continue to have your way in our midst, Lord. Honor, honor your people. Bless your people with your presence. We are honored. We are so privileged that we are in your presence. Minister your word. Open our eyes. Open our understanding. Change our understanding, we pray. Let stubbornness melt today. Rebellion be cast out in Jesus' name. That every wrong attitude be taken out of the way. Thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we are in the year of great rejoicing. Say great rejoicing. Great rejoicing. Say great rejoicing. great rejoicing. Say one more time. Say great rejoicing. great rejoicing. This is the year of great rejoicing. That's what the Lord spoke to us. And, you know, even at the beginning of this year, uh, you know, it came to us more of an instruction as much as it is a promise. It came to us as an instruction. This is the year of great rejoicing. And as much as we would like to look at it as a promise, you know, we must all, I, I, I remember telling you very clearly at the, on the first day, first Sunday of this year, I told you, this is an instruction for the church this year. 2020 is the year of great rejoicing. You must choose to rejoice. You know, and I was quite encouraged, um, even as uh, Pastor Christopher, uh, for YWAM Open Night, Pastor Christopher shared something from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. He shared, uh, rejoice always, pray without, let me see if you remember, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. I was so encouraged uh, by that word that he shared. It was you know, a reminder of God, what God has spoken to us. And as we progress through an year, I mean, th through almost... Five months of this year, five months down the line, you now many of us might be wondering, okay, there are, there are situations that we have faced, there are struggles that we have faced, there are circumstances that we are in. It does not really look like it's a year of rejoicing. How can we rejoice with all this, all these uh, struggles? How can we rejoice going through all these circumstances? How can we rejoice at the face of these situations? And I know, you know, most of your stories, if not all of your stories, most of your stories, you know, you come and share, you know, for prayer, for counsel. And I know what you're going through, most of you. You know, I know what you're facing in life. And I know some of your struggles are, um, I mean, it's even difficult to explain. It's, uh, it makes you wonder, why? How, how can, how can that happen? To him, how can that happen to them? How can they go through this? The Spirit of God is saying to us, reminding us again, rejoice. Say rejoice. rejoice. Because he does not change his mind. He says rejoice. Rejoice. It's a commandment. Rejoice. Amen. And it, it, it must be a deliberate choice in your life. It must be a deliberate choice to rejoice in the Lord. Amen. And it comes as an instruction. To rejoice in the Lord. And to stimulate each other to rejoice in the Lord. You know, when you come to church, don't come with a gloomy face. You might be facing situations in your home. It, it might, there, may, there may be things that you have you know, left back at your, in, your, in your family, with your, at your home. But when you come to church, come with the expectation that God is going to meet with you. Amen. Amen. Come with the expectancy that's going to be contagious. That everyone who you, whom you meet will also... Get that same kind of expectancy. Because you're coming to the house of the Lord. Amen. And God is about to do something in our lives. 
Now one thing that the Lord is repeatedly telling me this season and I've I've spoken this to some of you I don't know who all I have spoken this to you know when you know when I whenever I got a chance to sit with you maybe I'll, you know in to pray pray with you or to counsel you and I've spoken this to some of you one of the things that the Lord has been repeatedly telling me of this past maybe one month or two months is do not look at the present do not look at the present and define your future do not look at what you're going through now and see that's going to be your future and that's what the enemy wants you to believe now your present is not your future you know i was troubled about some things i was troubled about some things and you know i started to sense that the trouble is slowly transforming into a nature of worrying which i don't like i don't like to find myself worrying i don't normally worry and i don't like to worry you know it, it's something that i I hate to see myself you know in a place of worry. You know, I get troubled about things but I don't like to you know that to progress into worry. So I was facing this situation and I was getting troubled about it and I kind of sense that that troubling is transforming into a place of worrying where you are thinking about it pondering about it too much repeatedly looking at it repeatedly worrying and you know anxious thoughts are all over your head. And that's when I heard the spirit of God minister right into the depths of my being. Do not look at what you see now and think this is your portion in life. And many of us make that mistake. We look at what we are going through right now. We look around, we take a good look around, we observe, we uh, make uh, observations, we take notes and we think, okay, this is how it's going to be for me. For the rest of my life I'm going to live with this. No. That's a lie, say lie. lie. That's a lie. That's an anomaly for a Christian. A Christian will never get stuck. It should never get stuck. I should correct myself. A Christian should never get stuck. A Christian is not meant to get stuck in life. So I started to speak it out. And whenever I I I sense this worry creeping in I started to you know the Lord put in my heart to confess it speak it out I say I refuse to settle to what I see today I refuse to sell to what I see today I refuse to dwell in this place I refuse to remain what I'm seeing now remain in the place of what I'm seeing now And I'm going to reach where God wants me to reach You know that's what you must confess. I'm going to reach where God wants me to reach. I'm going to become what God what God wants me to become. I'm not going to miss out what he has in store for me. Amen. Amen. God has some great things in store for me, Amen. and I'm not going to miss out on that. Maybe in the past I missed out on a few things, but not anymore. I don't want to miss out on anything that God has in store for me. I've made up my mind. You know many a times we feel like when we face troubles we feel like those troubles are going to stay with us for the rest of our lives. We are quick to engage with our troubles and make it a part of our lives. The Bible says do not give a foothold to the devil. So sometimes when we see those troubles instead of thinking about overcoming the troubles now you start to live in with the troubles or you start to accommodate those troubles and you start to become numb towards those troubles and the devil wants you to believe that the trouble troubles are going to stay the problem can stay where it is but i'm not going to stay with the problem Amen. that's what you must decide you know, the problem can stay where it wants to stay but i'm going to move on i'm going to make progress I'm going to change. I'm going to receive God what God has in store for me. God has a solution for this and I'm going to receive this. Amen. Don't don't make a pact with the problems. Don't stay with your troubles. Don't stay with your difficulties. Choose to stay with the Holy Spirit. Tell your neighbor choose to stay with the the Holy Spirit. Now the Bible says surely says surely. The Bible says surely. Not a man Bible the Bible said the Bible. The word of God says surely. Goodness say goodness and mercy shall follow me 
all the days of my life. That's what the Bible says. And the Bible does not say, surely troubles and agony and pain and lack will follow you all the days of your life. No! Goodness and mercy. So wherever you go, goodness and mercy will follow you. So, but you may face troubles. You now, as you are progressing through life, as you're progressing, as you're making progress in life, you may face and you may encounter struggles, you may encounter troubles, you may encounter situations, trials. Don't make it a part of your life. By my God, I will leap over a wall. By my God, I will leap over a troop. I'll jump over a wall. That's right. God, has, God will cause all things to work together for the good of those who love Him. Tell your neighbor, you're facing that trial only to overcome. No, one more time. Now prophesy over that person. Say, you're facing that trouble. You're facing that trial only to overcome. And have the mindset of an overcomer. Don't marry your trouble. Don't marry your trouble. You know, James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. It says, Consider it all joy, my brethren. Consider it all joy. Smile and say, Consider it all joy. Now think about your trouble. Think, think about your struggles. Think about your trials. Yeah? Think about the difficulties. Think about the lack. Think about the pain. Think about the agony. And say this, Consider it all joy, my brethren. When you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Amen. Amen? James started to write about this. He started to write about trials. But he is not talking about trials anymore as he progresses through that line. He's talking about testing of your faith, talking about endurance is talking about perfect result is talking about perfection and completion is talking about lacking in nothing now for us it's all the, the other way around no we our end result is always troubles and trials now you're only passing i'm only passing through i'm passing through now I'm passing through this season. It's a rough patch maybe, but I'm passing through. I'm not going to stay here. This is not my terrain. This is not my contour. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep moving. Amen. I don't know how many of you know this. Your, your story is a story of grace. Now your story is a story of grace. We've been talking about grace. It's, it's being, your story is being scripted by grace. It's being scripted by grace. And I, when when uh, Nisha was praying at the start of the service, you now one of the things that the Lord showed me is, it's like, a, <coughs> it's like you're on a journey. Yeah, you mentioned something about progressing. You mentioned something about moving. Yeah, you mentioned something about moving. Yeah, move with the Spirit, He said. Move, move, move. You have to move. You have to respond. You have to move with the Spirit. And as she was praying that, the Lord showed me how, a vehicle will pull up into a, into a petrol bung, a, a gas station. Because you're set for a journey. Okay, you're going for a long journey. And uh, you know, everyone who's done a long journey, you know what we normally do when we go for a long journey. The first thing that you'll do is pull, uh, pull up to a petrol station, a gas station, and fill up your tank. Say, fill up your tank. <laughs> you got to fill up your tank. With what? With the grace of God. With the grace of God. The grace must be your fuel in this journey. Every step of the way, every mile that you travel in your Christian walk, you must be fueled by grace. Because grace brings progress. Say progress. Grace brings progress. It brings progress into, into our lives. Now we serve a God. The Bible says we serve a God who makes all grace. Say all grace. All grace abound. Say abound. We learned a few things about grace. He's a God who can make all grace abound. We heard that grace has got manifold expressions. And we are stewards of the manifold grace of God. Amen. We heard that grace can enrich our lives. How? In all speech and in all. 
So I feel like, where did that come from? That comes from the Bible for your kind information. Grace enriches your life in all speech and in all knowledge. Grace highlights you. By the way, you know, I mentioned that, you know, uh, I, I, I gave you the illustration of, uh, you remember that, you know, highlighter, I, I, I told you that, you know, out of, the four, out of the four people working in that company, we have one believer, that was David, and he got highlighted. Guess what happened yesterday? Any guesses? He lost his job. How can that be highlighting? You know what happens when you're fueled by grace? Grace takes you to places where God wants you to go. Amen. Grace will take you out of places where God doesn't want you to stay. Amen. Amen. So that's why we count it all joy when you face various trials. And some of you, oh, he lost a job. How mean of the pastor to, to use him as an illustration. He just lost the job yesterday. He didn't even cry through it. But I'm telling you, now you just wait and watch what God will do in his life. Amen. Because the story, his story is being scripted by grace. Amen. It's being scripted by grace. Grace is scripting his future. Amen. Amen. That's the season of change. And if you want to crib about, oh, you, I lost my job, I don't have any money in my bank, you know, I'm, I'm feeling uh, tired, nobody is uh, you know, talking with me, you know, I'm... Uh, and if you're going to crib about all that, you're going to miss out. Because God is doing something outside of your knowledge, outside of your expectation, outside of your wisdom. And he's going to, and everybody's going to look like this. What? How did that happen? Now you want to see what you can do? Tata, bye bye, see you. All the best. And you want to see what God can do? Come join the bandwagon. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And today we're going to look at yet another working of grace. It's, it's in the same book, James chapter 4 and verse 10. This also was ministered, by the way, when the prayer was being offered. James chapter 4, verse 10. Hallelujah. There's a word for you. Humble yourselves in the presence of God and He will exalt you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Humble yourselves. Humble yourselves. Now when you are going through a situation, what you must do? Humble. Say humble. Humble yourselves in the presence of God and He will exalt you. That's a great lesson to live by. But how does it work? How does that exaltation work? The instruction is to humble yourself. Okay. But it says, the promise is that He will exalt you. But how does that work? In a few verses above, we see the dynamics of this phenomenon. That's in verse 6. But he gives greater grace. He gives more grace. Some version says he gives more grace. Therefore it says God is opposed to the proud but gives grace to the humble. So exaltation will come from humility. Why? Because God gives more grace. And if you're confused, how can, how can humbling before the presence of God bring about exaltation? The answer is when you humble yourself, you, there's a divine transaction, say divine transaction, a transaction of grace which proceeds from the throne of grace. Amen. Amen. It flows from the presence of God. That's why it says, humble yourself in the presence of God. It flows from the presence of God into your life. What flows? Say grace. The grace of God will flow from the throne of grace into your life. Amen. It'll exalt you. Now we, we heard that word, you might be in the, no, the, the other word that you said, uh, in the ash heap. You may be sitting in the ash heap. You might be sitting in the dust. Now the grace of God, which is the empowerment of God, which is the power of God, will, will do what? It will be attracted to you as you humble yourself under His mighty hand and will exalt you. The grace of God will lift you. The empowerment of God will lift you. Amen. 
Say transaction. Say I believe in transaction of grace. You know, if, if I were to speak to you today and prophesy over you and say that God's going to give you this, He's going to give you a million dollars, He's going to give you a house, He's going to give you a good job, you look, all get excited, I'm sure. But now the Word of God is guaranteeing to you. It's guaranteeing. Say the Word of God is guaranteeing. It's giving you a guarantee. You humble yourself under His mighty hand. You humbly, humble yourself in His presence. Exaltation will come. No man has to prophesy about this. No prophet has to release the word over you. This is the word for you. Amen. Your word, you take it. You have it, you enjoy it. Prove it in your life. Amen. The guarantee of the scripture. And the many Christians don't understand this. God's word has committed. It says committed. committed. God's word is committed to exalting you. You didn't get that. I said, God's word is committed to exalting you. It's committed to exalting you. What more do you want? His word is committed to exalting you. His word is committed to exalting you, promoting you. It's sure, it's sure. Say it's sure. It's, it's mine. It's sure. Amen. And you don't have to work for your exaltation. You don't have to work for your promotion. Grace will work for you. Amen. How cool is that? And we all like to, yeah, okay. And there is, see, in the Bible, the Bible gives us room for hard work. It, it engrages hard work. It honors hard work. Yes, it is there. Now I'm talking about the dispensation of grace, the workings of grace, which is like, you know, you, it, you don't have to strive about it. You don't have to struggle about it. All you have to do is something which only you can do. What is that? Ah, that's right. Which even, not even God can do that for you. And that's the problem. The, the, the issue is you got to do something which nobody else can do for you. Which nobody else can do for you. Sometimes we pray, Lord, humble me. No, God cannot humble you. You got to humble yourself. There's no prayer in the Bible, humble, humble me, Lord, humble me. There's no such prayer in the Bible. But the Bible instructs us to humble yourselves. Have this attitude be, let this attitude be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. So you have to look at Christ and have that attitude in you. It's your choice. Learn, that's right, learn. For I am lowly and meek. I am humble and gentle. So when you learn to be humble, and you stay humble in the presence of God, irrespective of what is going on in your life, Exaltation will come. Amen. Honor will come. Hallelujah. Amen. Now the, the amazing thing about this truth is that it is repeated in scripture. What we just read in from James is repeated word to word in scripture. And you find that in 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Verses 6 and 7. Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you at the there's a proper say there's a proper time. Tell anybody there's a proper time coming for me. A proper time. Say it's, they say it's near. I say I know it's near. The proper time of my exaltation is near. Amen. He, that he, may, he may exalt you at the proper time. Casting all your anxieties on him. Because he cares for you. Amen. So you can face situations which can make you anxious. Yes you can. You can face situations, trials and temptations. Yes you can. But instead of being worked up and being worried about it, cast your worries. The Bible says, cast your worries. Throw it on Jesus. That's what it means. Cast it. Cast it. All your worries on Him. I can't take it. You know, when, when we go to pick up our children from school, this is a sight you must see. You know, I've, uh, we've done it with the, the first two. And the, from this year on, we're going to do it with the, all three. Okay? Usually, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes I tell my wife I can't go alone because it's too much for me to handle. Two kids and two bags and all the paraphernalia that, he tra they, that they move around with. So this year we're going to do it with three. Maybe you have to hire somebody to get this done. So that's, they know it. You know, they're tired after a long day at school. They come out of their building and they just throw the bag to us. Here, take. 
and then, then they wave. they walk freely they wave at their friends they talk to their friends we are carrying one bag on the shoulder one bag on the other so cast cast your burdens cast your worries cast your anxieties be like little children and you know see when your father is walking by your side why you want to carry your bag i don't carry that bag you know i you know if 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 i let my children carry my bag when i am with them i am not a good father and if they don't take the advantage of the father being with them they don't know the father the father's heart you know sometimes we are like that in our christian walk you know we take all the anxieties on us all the worries you know why that is it's a form of pride you know i don't want my father to carry my bag you know what will people think and i can handle this myself don't let your pride stand in the way of you experiencing the grace of god you know the one thing that can stand in the way of your promotion the one thing that can stand in the way of your exaltation is your pride your stubbornness and even that was ministered this morning your stubbornness your your pride your self righteousness your stiff necked uh, next condition cast your worries you know i can't handle this you know i don't want to handle this my father is here i don't want to carry my bag i got no pride about it i i can't i can't say i can't i can't i can't take this burden anymore i'm not trying to fix the situation i'm going to give it to god casting all you say that's that's what the bible says casting all your anxiety on him yes anxiety can come troubles can come when trials you when you face trials yes anxious thoughts can creep in it is a it's a way of of life but as a christian you are not allowed to carry it all by yourself don't try to find your own solutions don't don't try to work around it with your wisdom allow the lord and this has to sink in now i want to see okay now listen 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 all of you listen 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 one of my i love to say this because it's the absolute truth okay this is this is something that can set you free listen are you all listening yes okay nobody cares for you the way jesus cares for you Amen. nobody say nobody you know your your husband might be feeling a little how can she say that your wife might be feeling a little uh, uncomfortable now because you just said nobody cares for me like jesus cares for me nobody loves me like how jesus loves me amen nobody means good for me the way jesus means good for me and that's the absolute truth amen and that's the truth now you're going to listen to you know this person and that person and this brother and that sister and this father and this that mother and this you now you're going to you're going to miss out on what god has in store for you now don't trust your life with people it's a mistake don't trust your life with people no matter how close they are no matter how well meaning they are you can have fellowship you can have friendship all that is good but trust your life into the hands of the living god who knows the end from the beginning amen. Amen? amen hallelujah and he cares for you like like nobody cares for you no his that's why the bible says his plans for you are better say better his plans for you are better than your plans amen, amen? he can plan things for you better than how you can plan for yourself you know some of us think we are the the experts no we think we are professionals in what in planning things for ourselves and i want to tell you you are cells you, you 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 don't even know anything you're not even a beginner you're not even an amateur in planning when it comes to your your life you want to you want to hand it over to a, a real professional his name is jesus christ he can plan every detail of your life with such precision with such accuracy to the detail that's jesus for you and the earlier that you learn this for your for your own life the better for you because you will be wasting a lot of your time a lot of your resources a lot of your energy trusting this person and that person and this man and that 
Chetan and that, this Sachatan and this Chechi and get a life. Jesus, say Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's all that matters. He's all that matters. So I'll tell you something that will set you free and when it comes to relationships. Now he, all the husbands, please put your hands up. All the husbands, including myself. Husbands, listen to this. Jesus loves your wife more than you do. Yes. Hallelujah. Now the, all the wives can say, wow, what a relief. <laughs> Finally, my husband admitted to that. But that's the truth. Jesus loves your wife more than your husband. And all the wives, put your hands up. Jesus loves your husband more than you do. And all the parents put your hands up. Think about your children. Jesus loves your children. That's a little difficult to digest. Jesus loves your children more than you do. So I'm not going to be a fool trusting my plans over God's plans. No! Because His plans are greater than my plans. His wisdom is greater than my wisdom. His thoughts for my children, His thoughts for my family, my wife, my ministry, my church are greater than all my thoughts. How precious also are the thoughts. It talks about the thoughts of God. How vast is the sum of them. Can you imagine it talks about the, the sum of God's thoughts concerning your life. That's right. His thoughts for you outnumber. Say outnumber. The sand grains on the seashore. Now sometimes I, I, you know, my wife catches me. What are you thinking? And I really don't know what I'm thinking. That's the truth. You know, I'll be thinking something. But when she asks me, like, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. But that's not God. Every thought is purposeful. Every thought is purposeful. It's full of prudence. Say prudence. It's full of wisdom. Amen. It's full of purpose. Amen. That's our God. Amen. Don't say I can handle this myself. Don't say I can handle this myself. My advice to you, at least when your house is on fire, shed your pride. <laughs> the, the kind of pride that we all have. You know, there'll be fire all around you. Your butt will be on fire. But the pride will not leave you. Don't be like that. Shed your pride. No, I can't. It's all right to say, tell God, Lord, I can't. You know, I've told him. I think even today morning I told him, I can't. I can't do this. I can't. I can't handle this. I need your grace. I need your grace. All your pride, all your arrogance, your, you, know, you, your, you, you think that you can do this. No, you can't. Shake it off. And say, Lord, I want help. I want help. You know, that's why the Bible says, come boldly. Say, come boldly. To the throne of grace. That you may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hallelujah. See, if not for the grace of God, your story will be different. And some of you are charting, you're trying to script your story with your own words. There's no language of grace. Maybe it's your smartness that you're trying to script it with. Maybe it's your experience, your, your confidence in the things that you've done, your experience, your, your knowledge, your education, your money. I don't know what it is. But I'm telling you, it's going to falter, it's going to fail. But if you let the Holy Spirit script it for you, the story of grace, I don't deserve it, but I have it. I don't deserve it, but I have it. You know, I don't earn it, but I get it. We heard that today at the table. You know, he took what we deserve so that we can have what he deserved. Well, that's, a, that's a great place to be. You know, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to strive for something I don't deserve. When I have something that he deserves, why should I strive for something I don't deserve? Hallelujah. Say, humble yourself. Humble your beer. No, choose to be humble. It's, your, it's a choice that you have to make. No, you're not a great person. You are not. You're not. You think you're great. I mean, let others say you're great, but don't say that you're great. 
Let others say that you're great. Let, the, let commendation come from others. Let your commendation come from God. But know who you are. You know, I know who I am. When I don't want to put on something else before you, I'm, I know who I am. I know what I'm capable of. You, know, you want to know what I'm capable of? Don't tell anybody, nothing. That's what I'm capable of, nothing. I, I thought I was capable of many things, but I realized that I'm capable of nothing. So that's why I'm in need of grace. And I realized at, one, at some point of my journey with the Lord, I realized that I'm capable of nothing, but there is something which can help me in everything that I face in life. His capability, his ability. That's why I told you ability. I told you my definition for grace is grace is the ability of God. It's the ability of God which works in your weakness, in your inability. It's the empowerment of God which comes and plays its part in your weakness. So admit that you're you're not capable. I cannot impress people. I cannot handle situations. I cannot run a family, forget the church. That's who I am. Thanks for the grace of God. If not for the grace of God, I will not even, you know, I will not even begin to think all this. Say grace. Say grace. Say grace. Say grace. Say I need grace. And God gives more grace. You know, when you, when you fall into trials, know this, God will give more grace. That's what the Bible says. He gives more grace. He gives greater grace. He gives a greater grace than your trouble. A greater grace. And as we say, a greater grace than what? Than your trouble. So that you can overcome. The devil wanted the trouble to subject you and put you down and make you sit in that place. But the grace of God will pull you out of it which is greater than your trouble. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 5. All of you clothe yourselves, verse 5. All of you clothe yourselves with humility. Who will clothe, who has to clothe your, you? You have to clothe yourself. This morning who clothed you? This morning who clothed you? Unless you are a child. Uh, unless it is like Kathy baby. All of you clothe yourself, right? Right? Exactly like that. All of you clothe yourselves with humility. You have to clothe yourselves. You have to decide to clothe yourself with humility toward one another. For God is opposed. Say opposed. God is opposed. Oh, God is opposed to the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. He gives more grace. He gives a greater grace. Hallelujah. You cannot progress in life without the grace of God. There is no promotion without the grace of God. Now I can rephrase that for you. Grace brings progress. Grace brings progress. Grace will promote and exalt. I want to repeat that one more time. Things are not going to be status quo. Things are not going to be the same. Some of you think it's going to be like this. Oh, I'm, I'm facing this. It's going to be like this for the rest of my life. No, it's not going to be like that. If grace, we, we sang that song. Grace is on our side. You know what you just sang? The power of God is on my side. That's what you sang. The ability of God which can exalt you is on my side. That was your confession this morning. And it brings, brings progress. It brings exaltation. It changes your situation. It scripts a different story in your life from what you're seeing right now. Now, I remember the seasons of my life when things were really hard. Like if you, if you ask us, we can narrate a lot of stories. You know, when things were really hard for us as a family. You know, I can narrate the stories about seasons in my life when nobody really cared. I remember windows in my life when we felt like, you know, we must just give up. You know, this is not happening. We must just give up. But if you ask me now, those are but faint and distant memories in my mind. It's, it's like almost, and I have to strain my mind to remember it. I really strain my mind to remember it. You know why? 
Because God came through every time we decided, we chose to humble ourselves under His hand. Every time. You know, there are seasons where some, some seasons were very tough. Some seasons were very, sometimes some patches in our life were like really depressing and discouraging. But if you allow the Lord to minister to you, and then you choose to humble yourself under His mighty hand, trusting in His plan, and allow the grace of God to script your life, everything will change. And everything has changed. Everything has changed. You know, my, my present has no resemblance with my past. This is my testimony. My present has no resemblance with my past. And some of you can agree, to, you can relate to what I'm saying. Your present has no resemblance with your past. Hallelujah. You know, there, are, there are times when you struggled. There are some of you had times in your, in your life where you, you didn't even have one square meal a day. You didn't have a good house to live. You didn't have anything to provide to your children. But the grace of God scripted a different story. It scripted, it, it rewrote a story in your life which no man could have imagined. No man could have thought. And that's the story that I like to live in. Amen. And if you ask me, so today when we face challenges, yes, do we face challenges now? Yes, we do. There are, there are seasons that we go through. We face challenges. You know, like all of you do, we also face challenges. We also go through rough patches. But now for, for us, it is easier, say easier. Easier to believe that this will change. Because we've seen God come through. It is easier for us to confess that this is going to pass. It is easier for us. Why? Because we've seen God come through in, in, a, in a much bigger situation. When there is no hope. So I want to guarantee you, if you choose to humble yourself, I can guarantee you, exaltation is yours. Promotion is yours. Progress is yours. Change is yours. Progress is inevitable. I've written down in, in my notes. Progress is inevitable for a person walking in the grace of God. So do not own your today. Hold, hold loose. Hold it loose. Hold it loose. Do, do not own it. Do not, do not, like I said, do not marry your present. Do not marry your trouble. Hold it loose. Let go. Let go. Let go. Because tomorrow holds better things for you. Why? That's how grace functions. That's how grace functions. Grace always is always progressive. Say progressive. It is always progressive. It always takes you to a better place. It gives you, holds better promises. So walk in that awareness and anticipation of God's grace changing your story. Now some of you are waiting to be famous and influential to start helping others. One day when I'm influential in this town, when few people know my name, I'll start to help other people. You know what is that? There's no anticipation in you. Now if you have anticipation, you will start to help others right now. And one day when I become a millionaire, I'll start to give and be more generous. I want to tell you if you have 100 bucks, is that, that's all that you have in your, in your pocket. 100 bucks. Be generous with your 100 bucks. I'm telling you. Be, these are secrets in the kingdom. Be generous with what you have in your pocket and see what God can do. Amen. See what God can do. If you're faithful with a little, you know, God will, you know, you come to my home and I will show you, I don't have space to keep my shoes. Okay, this is no boasting. You know, because I'm a pastor, I'm, I'm just revealing my life to you. Now you come to my home, there is no space for me to keep shoes. You know, one thing I've practiced in life is bless others with shoes. And I love to do it. Today, I don't have space. I'm, I'm actually planning of building a wardrobe exclusively to keep my shoes. Yes. Amen. Amen. God bless you with more shoes. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're short with the, the gospel preparation. Amen. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach good tidings. I believe that word for myself. And I look at that word. That is about me. That's about me. 
do that and i know i i remember you know one man of god was telling me every time i go to his home there are there are chocolates chocolates the fridge is full of chocolates so he said his son you know whenever you know he goes to a shop he'll buy some toffees just to give not to keep eat for himself but to give other friends now his home is always full of chocolates So if you're planning to be a chocolate uh, company owner to to bless others with chocolates that does not work like that but if you have if you have 10 rupees in your pocket buy some toffees give it to your friends there are a lot of kids here pastor also likes chocolates by the way <laughs> hallelujah be like that be generous say be tell your neighbor be generous No, see generosity generosity is an expectation of the grace of god working in your life you're expecting progress you're expressing expre- uh, expecting promotion you're expecting um resources to come your way no plan say plan plan to bless others plan to bless others you must tell people you know when when i want to bless you when you have nothing in your hands do that and you know, that's uh, that's an incredible place to be when you don't have nothing in your hands you say i'm going to do this for you i'm going to do this for you that's that's a statement of faith i'm going to do this for you i will do this the right time i will do this and you plan and you pray amen and ask the lord because you're expecting progress you some of you are waiting to you know, get some evidence and then finally say it no no it won't happen like that you plan you plan now amen hallelujah i hope today i will i will overhear some planning today yeah, i i i really hope that today i will overhear some of you planning and you know and and committing i'm going to do this for you i'm going to bless you with this i'm going to bless you with that hallelujah praise god are you happy amen that's no you must be be aware of the workings of grace the workings of grace grace is working always working over time you even when you are sleeping grace is at work do you know that hallelujah even when you are sleeping grace is at work you don't know what you're doing you just you're just committing to do something for the lord grace is at work this is something that's for to encourage you okay just to encourage you You all know that God blessed us with the home three years back, four years back. God blessed us with the home, and uh, you know when we are building the house, um, you know we are planning the kitchen, and you know we plan the kitchen in such a way that you know we we made a provision for a fridge, okay? And um, it was our desire to have a big fridge, okay, the big a big one, a really big one. Our desire, it was her desire. So whatever was her desire. I wanted to do it for her, uh, and because I know if I don't do it, God will do it for her. So I must be in agreement with God, because God loves her more than me. So I'm 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 walking in that revelation. So, so when she has a desire for me, I don't I don't I'm not confused about it. So I just uh, agree with her and I wait. So, um, one of those weeks we just came to church and she said she she wants to come along. I had to meet somebody, pray for somebody. I I forgot exactly. I had an appointment nearby. to just meet with somebody so she said nisha said i want to come along with you so you know she came here and uh, i just went off to that place um and we didn't have a big fridge by the way and our house warming was like you know one or two weeks down the line and it's a big fridge that we wanted and there's a big space if you see there's a space given provided for the fridge it's a big one a big f- so an empty space looks very bad it's like in a kitchen you have a big empty space and it's like okay it's like a room <laughs> i can play hide and seek there so we came uh, you know i dropped her here and i went off to that place and the reason she came was to clean the church fridge we have a fridge here a small fridge which somebody blessed us with some years back so she just you know it was troubling her that it was not clean and you know she didn't have time to do it on a sunday so she came mid of the week to just come and clean it and you know, put to guard everything clean the fridge 
So I was away. I, uh, as I was coming back, I'm getting a call. A friend of mine and just, just casually called me and he asked me, uh, so when are you going to move into your new home? I said, so and so date. And he said, I want to give you something. Uh, and uh, what do you want? I said, no, we have everything that, you know, everything that is required. Definitely, I didn't want to tell him that I need a fridge. And he said, no, 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 I want to give you something. It doesn't matter how big it is. He said the word big. It doesn't matter how big it is. We want to bless you. I want to bless you with that. So I said, okay. I said, yeah, we, we don't have a fridge right now. We have a small fridge, but we would like to have a bigger fridge. He said, you go and pick any fridge that you want. How big it is, doesn't, does not matter. How expensive it is, does not matter. Just let me know what's the price. I'll give it for you. Amen. So when she was cleaning the fridge in the church, which is a very easy thing to do. It's not a difficult thing. Is it a difficult thing to clean a, a fridge? Not really a difficult thing. But the working of grace was such that God wanted to align a big fridge for you to use in your home. Man, that's, that's, the, that's how God works. God, that's how God works. And I just want to encourage you. you know, everything that you do in the kingdom will come back to you. It's an investment. It's a sowing. You know, in fact, uh, I have a few uh, things. Remember the five loaves and two fish. Remember the two copper coins. Remember the handful of flour and a little oil. None of them tried to give beyond their means. They were generous with what they had. And that is humility. When you're generous with what you have, that is humility. God gives more grace. Now I want to read the scripture, Psalm 126, 5 and 6. Those who sow in tears shall reap with joyful shouting. He who goes to and fro weeping, carrying his bag of seed, shall indeed come again with a shout of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. This is the year of rejoicing. I want to declare it one more time. This is the year of joyful shouting. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. You humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and see what God can do. See His grace lift you up. See His grace position you beyond your wildest imagination. Don't define your tomorrow by your today. Don't define your future by your present. Weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. The shout of joy will come in the morning. A shout of joy. Shouts of joy are in the tents of the righteous. Now you, you don't adjust, don't accommodate with your with your agony. Don't accommodate with your pain. Don't accommodate space with, uh, with, with your troubles, with your struggles. No, don't do it. Don't, that's not God's plan for you. That's not God's plan for you. That's not, the, that's not how the grace of God functions in your life. Amen? That's not how the grace of God functions. Yes, there can be struggles. Yes, there are, there are trials that you face. Count it all joy. Smile and face Smile and face. I met a, a, a pastor recently. His wife had a, a tumor in, in her stomach. But the man was just smiling. And he, even as he's saying the story of how God kept them and provided for them and, you know, and helped them to come out of that situation, he's all smiles. He's not, he's not cribbing. He's not crying. He's, not, you know, he, he's talking about what he can do for the Lord. The poor man. I'm talking about a very poor man. And somebody who works with uh, Pastor Joy Mon. Pastor Joy. And I'm like, wow. So that's possible to count it all joy. Count it all joy. Not because of the trial, but what is the outcome? The outcome is perfection. Say perfection. The, per the outcome is completion. Amen. That you will lack in nothing. That's the outcome. So I, I jo I'm, I'm joyful about it. I'm going to smile. I may have sowed in, with tears, but I'm going to reap with shouts of joy. You know, I may have uh, you know, carried the bag of seeds with weeping, but I'm going to come back carrying the sheaves of harvest. Hallelujah. Smiling, laughing, singing and dancing. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, let your attitude change from this today onwards. Now let, let, be mindful of grace. Tell your neighbor, be mindful of grace. Do not fret. Tell your neighbor, do not fret. Do not crib. Do not frustrate the grace of God. 
Do not nullify the workings of grace. No, at, humble yourself. Say, tell your neighbor, humble yourself. Say, attract grace. Let grace script your future. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is God's word for you. If there was a tearful sowing, there will be a joyful reaping. Amen. If there was, if you have carried the bag of seed to and fro weeping, you shall indeed, say indeed, indeed, indeed come again bringing the sheaves with a shout of joy. Amen. Amen. It will happen. Amen. Because you are walking in grace. Amen. Amen. You are walking in grace. And from today on, your confession must be, I am walking in grace. Grace is scripting my life. Grace is writing my story. Everything is going to change. This is not my tomorrow. What I, what I see today, I will not see tomorrow. You heard that even at the, at the top of the service. What the enemy that you see today, you will not see tomorrow. That enemy is going to flee. Because you have submitted yourself under the mighty hand of God. And you're going to resist the devil. In doing so, you're resisting the devil. And you're going to attract grace. And grace will exalt you. It will make you sit with princes. Now some of you are going to sit in royal circles. Now today you might be insignificant. You might look very insignificant. You might look very small. You might look very obscure. Nobody knows about you. But I'm telling you, you will sit with princes. Because that's the working of grace. You might be in the ash heap, but you will sit with princes. You might be in the dust, but you will sit with the who's who. Declaring the mighty works of God. Declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. You will not lack in any good thing. Uh, today you, you may be lacking in certain things. You may see some lack. But do not adjust to that. Do not accommodate. Do not think that's going to be a portion in life. No. There's going to be progress. God's going to provide. It's going to come through. He's going to give you abundance. The grace of God give you abundance for every good work. It's going to come. It's going to come. Now, what you've dreamed, what you dream to do for the Lord, He will provide for that. Now, if you're, if you're a minister of God, this is a word for you. Whatever you've dreamed to do for the Lord, however big it is, it may be, doesn't matter, the Lord is saying, I will do it for you. I will do it for you. So let your dreams be big, but stay humble. Stay humble. Let your dreams be big, but stay humble. Hallelujah. Because your tomorrow is going to look different. And tell your neighbor, my tomorrow is going to look different. It's going to look different. Hallelujah. Amen. It's, it's looking brighter. Say so it's going to look brighter. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's, let's pray. I want all of you to stand up. We're going to pray for each other. We're going to pray, take this time and pray, declare the work of God, what He has accomplished today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Rikana Mosiante. Risharabo Siantu. Rikurura Basiantara Namasiante. Rikurura Basiantara Namashanta Namasiante. Rikurura Basiantu. Rushara Rabasiantana. Thank you, Jesus. Rikana Masiantana. Rikurura Basiante. Rikurura Bashara Rabasiantana. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the word that you spoke over your, over your people, over your church. Lord, every word that you said will come to pass. Everything will come to pass. Nothing will fail. Nothing will fail. Everything will come to pass. Word to word, everything that you said will come to pass. Hallelujah. You are a limitless God. You are a limitless God. Today we may be seeing our circumstances. We may be in a place of worrying. We may be in a place of crying. We may be in a place of weeping. But today Lord, even as your word has come through to us, Lord, we pray it will encourage let it encourage. Let it encourage your people. Let them be fueled by grace. Let them be fueled by grace. Fueled by grace. Full tank of grace. Abundance of grace. More grace. More grace. More grace I speak over your people. Thank you Lord. Let the workings of grace manifest Lord. Let it manifest Lord. Let the awareness of what grace can do. Keep them cheerful. Keep them expectant. Keep them encouraged. Let them not trust in the voice of man. But let them trust the voice of God. Let every distracting voice, every distracting thought, every distracting advice be cancelled in Jesus' mighty name. Everything that is intended to steal, to kill and destroy, we destroy it in Jesus' mighty name. We come against it. We bring it to nothing 
in Jesus mighty name hallelujah rana masiante riko rura ba shanta na masiante your people will progress your people will make progress the children of god will progress will make progress will inherit the land your children will inherit the land they will do mighty exploits in the in the, in the land that you give them me and my children are for signs and wonders and miracles thank you jesus hallelujah rakana mosianto rashanta namasiante rigoru rabasianto manamasiante thank you jesus rikara rabasianta rakana mosiante rishata rabasiante thank you lord thank you jesus hallelujah put on put on put on clothes clothe yourself clothe yourself with humility clothe yourself with humility let the grace of god be attracted to you let it be drawn to you today let it be drawn to you today hallelujah the god will give some of you voice of influence you're going to have a, you're going to carry a voice of influence you're going to have a voice of influence in your circle in the circle that god will send you you will be a voice of influence what you say will remain will make an effect it'll make an impact god is going to fill some of you more more say it's it's a god says more i'm going to give you more that you can give more you can give more you can bless you can you call to be a blessing you are blessed to be a blessing rakana bosi anto rishara bosi ante some of those desires that you have you want to do this in fact the lord is telling me that some of you have written it down some of you have written it down you, you have penned this down somewhere you have written it down a desire or desires that you have concerning the people of god concerning the kingdom of god and god is saying i will what i have given in your heart i will enable you i will enable you that you will do it my grace is sufficient today you may be in lack it will not that lack will not be your portion in life i shall not want because he is your shepherd he will take you to pastures of grace pastures of green pastures of grace you will you will graze on pastures of grace hallelujah you will be fed with grace nourished with grace masiante nikuruda basiante rakara basiante thank you father come here every single person here lord we pray that even as we have heard from you and you've declared over your church lord by the mouth of two witnesses everything is established you declared as a season of change we pray lord it will be so a season of change a season of progress a season of promotion a season of exaltation let it manifest even as your people choose to humble themselves under your mighty hand Hallelujah ratana masiante uri sharabasianto thank you lord namasianta ramasi thank you lord have your way in our lives have your way in our lives lord come to those who are watching us online we pray this word will will manifest in their lives this word will take effect it will take fruit bear fruit everything that you said will come to pass thank you for hearing our prayer may your name be lifted up in jesus name we pray Amen. Amen.